New in the lab today, we've got another NAS coming in from Synology. Now this one is the uh, home NAS. It's the one they launched at CES, the DS420J. Now honestly, Synology gets a little nervous when they send us the, the smaller home NASs because they know we're so performance heavy, but it's okay Synology. We can be gentle and use case appropriate too. And that's really the story with their J units that are more value oriented. They're perfect systems for small offices, home users, uh, even guys that want to experiment with home lab, anything along those lines, because you get the whole DSM experience from Synology, even in these smaller units. So you're going to get all of their software. You're going to get the capabilities to do things like backup. So you could do file share. You can use a surveillance station if you want to set this up in your home with cameras. Uh, it's got, um, like I said, backup photo view or all these other sorts of things that are extremely useful in the home, little small office. And of course, if you need something more powerful, it'll scale up from there. Let's get this guy out. We refer to this design as the toaster in a most affectionate way. This is one that they've had around for quite some time. Let's go ahead and pop off the foam cover. Where's the bottom here? Let's see what we've got going on. All right. So as we can see, like I said, the uh, 420J4 stands for four bays, 20 it's release year, and the J it's value line. What does that say? Please remove before powering on. That's a good tip. We don't want to leave a uh, plastic cover in front of the ventilation. So we've got uh, the normal stuff for these units across the front. We've got the power, we've got the hard drive activity lights, LAN port, and a status light. If we spin it around to the back, we've got a couple 80 millimeter fans, the, the thumb screws that we're going to take off to access the inside and ultimately where the hard drives will slot in. Uh, we've got the power connection for the power supply that'll be in here. One NIC, two USB, uh, three button or uh, outlets. We've got a reset button, and across the back, it's it's pretty thin. Now it does just have the one uh, gigabit LAN port, but that's going to be sufficient for the use cases that this is targeted for. And we'll talk about the specs in a minute. But inside, just to give you a preview, it does have a gig of RAM, and it does have a quad core CPU. So for $300 roughly at retail, if you look on Amazon or B&H or whatever you like, it's really a competent little unit for 300 bucks with all the features that it enables in the, in the home for all the sharing and, and file retention and backup needs. Well, let's go ahead and open this up and we'll take a closer look at the insides of this unit. When we access the drives on the J units, we're going to do that through a back panel here. Now the drives are still hot swappable, they're just not quite as easily accessible as they would be in Synology standard or plus lines where the trays will slide out the front of the unit. But that's okay, as we think about the typical use cases for something like this, the home user is not going to be accessing the drives frequently in most cases. Uh, let's go ahead and take the top off too so we can see what's going on here. Oh, that's exciting. There's actually uh, a couple drives in here already. Usually Synology's come to us bare, so that's kind of fun when we see uh, drives in there already. We'll get to those in a minute. Basically what happens though in slots three and four here is these trays come out. Synology ships a screw kit for these. These are uh, universal for both two and a half and three and a half inch drives. So you could put a hard drive in there. You could also put an SSD in there if you so chose. Just pull all this stuff out of here just to see. And we've got the CPU tucked in down underneath with a nice heat sink on it. Again, that's a quad core uh, Realtek 1296 CPU. So the drive trays that are installed have two screws on the sides. We'll go ahead and slide one of these out to see what we've got inside here. I was all ready to load this up with uh, 14 terabyte Seagate Barracuda drives because I thought it would be fun to fill it up with those, but let's see what we've got in here. Well, 
Synology did us one better. They sent 16 terabyte drives. So two of those, 32 terabytes. Now we could switch these out for the 14 terabyte drives if we wanted to fill it up, but with the gigabit LAN on the back, these two drives in RAID 1 ought to do just fine for themselves. So I think we'll leave those two drives in there, put them in a RAID 1 group and get to testing. To do that, let me put this back together. And get the drive back in. Now if Kevin was doing this, he probably wouldn't put these side screws back in. But this is the advantage of me being a hair more organized than our test lab coordinator. Let me put this back together. Put these, these trays back in. What have I done? There we go. All right, all put back together. We've got power here in the back of the rack already. We'll go ahead and plug it in. Give it a LAN connection. Power it up and get going. And from here, it'll take a little bit to spin up, but we'll pull up uh, the system through a web browser, make sure those drives that shipped with it are in good shape, put them in a RAID 1, and we'll get to testing. Again, for home user or, or a real small professional office, a small attorney or accountant or something like that, this is going to be a great little system, cost effective, like I said, uh, 300 without disks at Amazon right now, and you get all the great access and easy to use GUI uh, from Synology's DSM. It's really hard to argue against this little unit, honestly. Uh, even with having the drives put away inside, it's again a trade-off between cost of the system and performance uh, versus the, uh, the additional capabilities. And th this guy will, will do uh, really great work. So we'll go ahead and fire it up online and, and take a look at it. Like I said, make sure the disks are all good, provision the storage, and get to testing. The Synology is powered on and we found it on the network, dialed in the IP to a web browser, and here we are. Because it hasn't been set up prior, we'll have to give it a name. We'll just call it its own model so we can find it amongst others on our network. And we'll give it a weak password, which is fine. This isn't uh, a production unit, so it'll be okay. So go ahead and click next. It'll log us in. Set up Quick Connect ID. This is great for um, making it available on your network uh, remotely so that your DS Finder uh, apps, your DS Photo, DS uh, Music, whatever else you want to, uh, to enable. We'll skip this now because that's uh, easy enough that we can set up later continue to work through this initial DSM stuff and because it's new it's going to walk us through all of its tips which are probably handy uh, but anyone that's used the Synology even though this is uh, one of their smaller J units everything else looks the same here we've got our IP address uptime of 15 minutes or so the name the utilization all the normal things so what we'll do is go ahead and Go to Storage Manager and just make sure those drives are okay. No volume, no pool yet, but we've got the two drives. Let's go take a look at them. They're both initialized, which is great. As indicated in that uh, unboxing, they are uh, 16 terabyte Iron Wolves. So we've got those here, 15 terabyte roughly available. So that's great. All we really want to do then is go ahead and create a, uh, a, well, actually do the custom just because it lets us uh, pick it just the way we want. We'll do a RAID 1 with these two drives. Make sure they're both selected, which they are. We'll lose all the data. There's nothing on them anyway. 
and uh, we're not going to worry about a drive check now. We can do that when we've got a little more time. So we'll get a confirmation screen of our two drives. We're going to make a pool total capacity around 14 and a half terabytes. And off it goes, and it'll start working on that in the background. Uh, in the interim, you could check for updates, install additional packages, do whatever else you want to administer the system. Uh, you could go back and enable the Quick Connect, which we skipped through. Um, but overall, again, just like all the other Synology units, it's simple to use. Uh, the 4 bay J should be perfect for its intended use cases. Uh, of course, it's not going to be a screamer in terms of performance, but that's not the intention. For 300 bucks, you're going to get a, a great little NAS with four bays that are capable of taking the 16 terabyte hard drives that are in there or something more affordable. Uh, a couple terabyte hard drives these days are 45, 50 bucks. So you can still get really great capacity uh, out of the four bays it offers. But for now, we'll uh, stop here. And once this provisioning is done, oh, it's moving along. Once this provisioning is done, we'll. Uh, We'll hook it up for testing and uh, report back on storageview.com with the whole review. Thanks for watching.